what is concussion? It's a really complex process affecting the brain, and it's indu induced by mechanical and biochemical changes inside the brain. Now, everybody thinks if you have blood in the face or bruised eye, like I show you some of those pictures, you are really concussed. That's not true. If you are not hit on the face, if you are not hit on the neck, but your body has been jolted so bad that you went up this way, your brain can be concussed. And what happened is something very simple. Your brain is lying horizontal like that on the base of the skull. This is the base of the skull. This is the top of the head. And then when I hit my head here on the right side, my brain moves, believe it or not, it moves. And uh, my frontal on the right side, my left frontal hits the base of the skull. Have you ever seen the base of the skull? It's like the valleys of Lebanon and the ridges. <laughs> <that> <laughs> you know, like that. And it hits the base of the skull and produces bruises, produce concussion. You don't have to have a big blood clot. You don't have to have a big broken bone. Uh, to have a concussion. You don't have to be hit on the face or the neck, uh, or but you can be elsewhere on the body and then you can jolt. Jolting is the word. You do not have to be, this is the message of this lecture. I know we talked about the major uh, trauma uh, that uh, Nick was saying about, but these are the ones that we are having trouble. Read McLean magazine last week. Concussion, big thing. Lindros, uh, gone. Family, gone. Sex, go all these things that are the problem. They are so important. You do not have to be unconscious to sustain a concussion. Well, how can I make a diagnosis? It's simple. I got headache. I got dizzy when I got after a blow to the head. So you have, you know, Instead, you have an argument with your wife, and you got a headache and dizzy. No, you were hit on the head, <laughs> and, and 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 then you were hit very gently, gently. Don't have to be very big. Nausea and vomiting, feeling unsteady, dazed, confused. I'm I'm putting those word by word. Double vision, feel depressed, mood, personality changes, memory changes. Simply not feeling right. You train hockey. go back and then play. And this is a concussion. And the treatment of con those little con signs of concussion is that you don't do any more things till you are better. You stay here on the bench, which I'm talking about sport, it says, but in any event, you've got to have your brain cool down and relax. How many of those are missed? Name it. How many? 85 to 90% of concussion are not reported until after this is in sport, the practice, or the game. This is what we want to make people aware of concussion. The best example of those concussion is what you see on television in front of you. This guy lying on the floor, he got hit from the back, and then, or uh, the boxing. Uh, I mean, uh, can produce those damages, small little damage in the brain. In National Geographic, I put that on my floor on your pages, there is a little three pages in the issue before last on brain changes in concussion. So I said, read it, you know. This little, this little thing down there has disconnected some of those neurons, some of those bruising, and can produce so much damage. So the little concussion is going to produce side effect. In the year of our Lord, 1990, we wrote a paper called Neuropsychological Sexual Dysfunction Following Minor Head Injury with a psychologist and all you people. We've taken people who've had a little concussion. They didn't, you know, uh, was, were unconscious or anything like that. 
there was mild concussion, and then they had horrible time, familial disruption, uh, name it. All the gamut that we think it's psychological, it's all factual. And if you push investigation on all these people, you will find little bits of art. If you do a functional MRI, little bit of changes in that, neuropsych testing, uh, refined. So this is what we want to get the message out. The message is for children at this age group where the brain is young and, uh, and uh, ready to absorb like a sponge so many things and you hit him, it's not a good thing. So this is what we need to do. Don't forget, concussion, mild as it is, scar as it is, changes the entire brain function because your brain has moved, jolted, and then it can be jolted in many functions. And that's it for me, I think. And that, that gentleman here, <laughs> in, our, in our statistics, uh, we, we mentioned about uh, percentage of moose accident uh, producing uh, uh, head injury and concussion. It's on the increase. And then my advice to you is this. <coughs> I, hope, I hope you don't fail to meet all that. <laughs> there was a uh, uh, good resident in orthopedic years back who did a study on moose accident in Newfoundland, you know, trauma for our researcher. And he said, uh, he found out that those who try to escape the moose are those who one who had bad injury, neck, head, belly. They put the brakes on and they went into the ditch and the car went over and down. Those who went through the moose, <laughs> I'll, give you, I'll give you a picture if you want, through the moose, they escaped the bad thing injury and she showed a picture of a uh, motorbike car not the Harley Davidson somebody else went through the moose and cut the moose in half and went through and escaped it so I think the the, the sudden onset of this you know uh, by putting the brakes on maybe not a good idea I don't know I haven't had no experience with this I don't want to but but this is something so it has been a great pleasure being here and then talking to you people and trying to uh, tell you what we know, what we don't know, what we need, uh, and uh, uh, that, that the journey is at the beginning uh, of our understanding first of the brain, of our prevention, which is the most important thing, and of our working together. And this is a must, I think, to get our force pulled up and see what, what, what we need. Thank you.